ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय वेलकम टू टुडे सेशन फ्रॉम भगवत गीता एज इट इज बाईस डिवाइन ग्रेस भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी शीला प्रभुपात वी हैव स्टार्टेड द चैप्टर सेवन नॉलेज ऑफ द एब्सोल्यूट यस टुडे एंड वी विल continue from the fourth verse onwards today upam kavati vachalam pangum langate kirim yat kripa tamam mande shri gum din tarinam parmanand madhavam shri chaitanya ishwaram aryam tats verse 4 bhumi rapo नलो वायु खमनो बुद्धिरे वच अहंकार मे भिन्ना प्रकृतिर्ष्टधा अर्थ वॉटर फायर एयर ईथर माइंड इंटेलिजेंस एंड फॉल्स यू गो ऑल दीज टुगेदर एट कॉन्स्टिट्यूट माय सेपरेटेड मटेरियल एनर्जीज वर्स फाइव अपर ये रेय मित तस् तस्तवन्या प्रकृति विधि मे परा जीवभूताम महाबाहो येद धारयते जगत बिसाइड्स दीज ओ माइटी आर्म्ड अर्जुन देर इज अनदर सुपीरियर एनर्जी ऑफ माइंड विच कंप्राइज द लिविंग एंडिटीज हु आर एक्सप्लॉयटिंग द रिसोर्स ऑफ दिस मटीरियल इन्फीरियर नेचर फर्स्ट सिक्स एतद्योनि भूतानी सर्वानी त्यो पधारय अहम कृत्सन्न से जगत प्रभव प्रलयस तथा ऑल क्रिएटेड बीइंग्स हैव देयर रिसोर्सेस हैव देयर सोर्सेस इन दीज टू नेचर्स ऑफ ऑल दैट इज मटेरियल एंड ऑल दैट इज स्पिरिचुअल इन दिस वर्ल्ड नो फॉर सर्टेन दैट आई एम बोथ द ओरिजिन एंड द डिसोल्यूशन वर्स सेवन मत परतर नान्यथ किंचिदस्ति धनंजय मयि सर्वद प्रोतम सूत्रे मणिगणा इव ओ कॉन्कर ऑफ वेल्थ देर इज नो ट्रूथ सुपीरियर टू मी एवरीथिंग रेस्ट अपॉन मी एज पर्ल्स आर स्ट्रंग ऑन अ थ्रेड वर्स एट रसो हम पशु कौंतेय प्रभास्मी शशि सूर्य प्रणव सर्वेदेशु शब्द खे पौरुषम नृषु O son of Kunti, I am the taste of water, the light of the sun and the moon, the syllable Om in the Vedic mantras. I am the sound in ether and ability in man. Verse nine: Purnyo gandha prithiviyam cha te jas chasmi vibhavaso, jivanam sarv bhute shu tapas chasmi tapas vishu. I am the original fragrance of the earth and I am the heat in fire I am the life of all the lives and I am the penances of all ascetics verse 10 bijam mam sarv bhutanam vidhi partha sanatanam buddhir buddhi matam asmi tejaste jeevasvinam aham translation o son of pritha know that i am the original seed of all existences the intelligence of the intelligent and the prowess of all powerful men text 11 balam balvatam chaham kamaraga vivarjitam dharma viruddho bhuteshu kamosmi bharatar shabah i am the strength of the strong devoid of passion and desire i am the sex life which is not contrary to religious principles O Lord of the Bharatas, Arjun, verse twelve, ye chay vasat vika bhava rajas tam tamas chch ye matte eve ti tan vidhi na tuham te shute mai. Know that all states of being, be they of goodness, passion, or ignorance, are manifested by my energy. I am in one sense everything, but I am independent. I am not. under the modes of material nature for they on the contrary are within me so verse 4 four onwards uh, krishna is telling that he is everywhere everywhere whatever we see hear or observe or subside on 
he is everywhere so from verses 1 to 3 we we found out that by hearing from the authorized sources we can uh, get the this uh, spiritual knowledge of the divine and now krishna is telling arjun that how he is as god everywhere so it's like when we say to somebody that please show me what is the proof there is god then a realized person will tell us that he uh, he's uh, he can see god in all the energies around us whether it is the earth the fire the water the air the ether the, which is the sky the mind intelligence and false ego all these are actually lords separated material energies so this is prakriti material energy is called prakriti in sanskrit so as we know from the past readings um, sorry these uh, discussions that krishna's plenary expansions his uh, his other energies they assume the three vishnus the first one is the mahavishnu which creates the total material energy the second one is the garbhodakshai vishnu which enters all the universes to create the diversities and the third one is the kshirodakshai vishnu which is in all the pervading uh, living entities as super soul in all the universes and that is known as Paramatma. And he is also present in all of us within the atoms. So anything which we hear, uh, see around us as material energy is actually all being empowered by Krishna as three forms of the as as the three Vishnus. The Garbhodakshai Vishnu, uh, the Kshirodakshai Vishnu and the Mahavishnu. Uh, sorry. And uh, the total material energy is, is called the Mahat Tattva, which is created by Mahavishnu. So we find out that in the material energy the there are eight principal manifestations at said by krishna and out of the these the first five that is the earth water fire air and sky are called the five gigantic creations and uh, within each of the five senses within which uh, within which uh, i mean these uh, earth earth water air fire and sky there are five senses in there the physical sound, the touch, the form, the taste and the smell. The material energy, it comprises of 10 items and nothing more. The material science, actually. Now, the mind, intelligence and false ego are usually neglected by the materialist people. Now, the philosophers, Prabhupada says, who deal with the mental activities are also not perfect in this knowledge. Now, Krishna says that he is the ultimate source of everything the false ego is also krishna the mind is also krishna and the intelligence is also krishna and these uh, eight separated energies of the Lord they manifest the 24 elements of the material world it is all given in the purport of the verse 4 it's explained nicely there now in verse 5 Krishna says that Arjun there is another superior energy of mine which comprises the living entities who are exploiting the resources of this material inferior nature
we know this uh, creation all around has has got no power until it is kind of moved by a superior energy as Prabhupada says so all these energies around us also are being controlled by the energetic that is Krishna and these uh, energies have got no independent existence The Lord is the only controller and all the living entities are controlled by the Lord. And one who forgets the uh, controller, they start exploiting the material energy, the matter, being the superior energy which is the living entity. So we all are superior energies and all the matter around us is the inferior energy. So Bhagavad Gita confirms that uh, the living entity is only one of the energies of Krishna. And uh, once we get freed from the material contamination and we understand our full uh, relationship with Krishna, then we become truly liberated or Krishna conscious. In verse 6, Krishna says that uh, all the created beings have the origin in these two natures, the material and the spiritual And Krishna says he is the source of the both and he is the one who is uh, responsible for the, the eventual annihilation or the dissolution of these energies as well. So in Katha Upanishad it is confirmed Nityo Nityanam Chetanas Chetananam. So he is the, he that is the God, he is the source of all. And he is the original cause of all causes. In verse 7, Krishna continues that he addresses Arjuna as, as a conqueror of wealth, that there is no truth superior to Krishna and everything rests upon him just as the pearls are strung on a thread. So Krishna gives the beautiful analogy of pearls strung on a thread that the thread it remains completely invisible. So Bhagwan creates everything, he sustains everything and still he, re he remains invisible to everybody else. He is the supermost God is smaller than the smallest, he is greater than the greatest, he is the one who illumines the transcendental sky, he is, and as a tree, he's just like a tree spreads its roots, he spreads his extensive energies in various forms. Absolute truth is a supreme personality of Godhead who is all pervading by his multi energies, and we are only one of that energy and and his multi energies both material and spiritual in text 8 krishna says that uh, a realized person sees from verse 8 to verse 12 krishna says that how a person can see that how krishna pervades the entire material existence. Krishna addresses uh, Arjun as O son of Kunti, he says in the verse that he is the taste of water, the light of the sun, the moon and the syllable Om in the Vedic mantras and he is also the sound in the ether, the sky and the ability in a man. So water is the medium by which we use or which we are able to experience the various tastes and uh, that includes the saliva in our mouth actually so who is uh, who is the 
taste in the water it is it is the lord himself it is krishna so each element actually facilitates our experience of the sense object ether facilitates the sound and like we were saying in the uh, verse 5 was it yes yes in the verse 5 we were saying that uh, all the different forms uh, the the five the five main uh, energies the earth the water actually all of them they are they are the one who are facilitating the senses the you know the touch the taste the hearing the smell air facilitates the smell so the senses are also being empowered by these elements so lord is everywhere basically lord is telling us uh, in these verses verses 4 to 12 that he's the one who is pervading everything and uh, he is the one who actually satisfies us. Our hunger is also satisfied by the Lord's energy around us, uh, which, uh, you know, the energy which manipulates together how the air, the water and the sunshine and the earth, they cre help create the food for us and how we are able to satisfy our hunger and similarly water. So Lord is everywhere around us. This is what Lord is telling us in these verses that he is the supreme himself. So he's actually uh, clearing all the doubts of Arjuna slowly because the Bhakti Yoga has begun from chapter 7. Now Krishna is explaining that he is the essence of everything within the creation. The you know the, the extreme uh, sophistication of the creation we see around us or the you know the so-called uh, wonders we see and the so-called beauty we see around us it is all krishna end of the day so krishna is uh, explaining to arjun that he is also the sound omkar the, that is the transcendental sound and that sound is also a representation of krishna so the ones who are not in any kind of illusion, who are in proper knowledge, who are in Krishna consciousness, who who's, who can see, who are conscious about Krishna all around them, uh, they will get the liberation, and this this knowledge is actually uh, of Krishna is liberation. Prabhupada says, in verse nine, Krishna continues that he is the original fragrance of the earth. You know when the rain falls on the earth and we can smell the beautiful smell of the earth that is also krishna that fragrance of the earth is krishna and krishna says he is the heat in the fire and he is the life of all that lives and he is the penances of all the ascetics or the sadhus so whatever anyone is doing around us and uh, even sometimes we uh, as well uh, uh, surprise ourselves that oh I've been endowed with such an ability so all the capacities and all the abilities they're all coming from the Lord himself so Krishna is uh, explaining in so easy words to Arjun because he knew that we will be coming in the Kali Yuga, so us fallen souls and we have to have a simple explanation and then we had uh, Vashila Prabhupada he explained the the innermost meanings of these verses to us so beautifully so Krishna consciousness is active in every sphere Prabhupada says in the purport so also that uh, the di the digestion in our bellies is also supported by Krishna uh, that what we call in Sanskrit the, the Jataragni or the fire of our belly that is also Krishna so Krishna is not only providing us the food not only providing us the sustenance Krishna is also providing us the means to handle that food and, uh, and how to uh, digest it because without the digestion we won't get the uh, energy out of the food 
In verse 10, Krishna says that to Arjun as he calls him son of Pritha because uh, Arjun was the son of Kunti and Kunti was also called Pritha as well. He, he tells him Arjun that uh, he is the original seed of all existences, the intelligence of the intelligent and the prowess of all the powerful man, men. So we know that there are roughly 8.4 million species of life and some of them they are moving some of them are they are just they are not much moving they are quite inert they are just situated and uh, who is the father who is the seed giver of all these species it is krishna he is the supreme absolute truth from whom everything is coming krishna is the par brahman he is the supreme spirit and uh, Brahman is the impersonal form as we know, you know, the light, the effulgence coming from Krishna's uh, form. And the Par Brahman, it is personal. So Prabhupada actually gives a lot of mercy to us by repeating these terms again and again in the purports because he knew if our uh, memory is not very big. We tend to forget the things very easily and so it is sometimes repetitive for our own benefit. So Krishna is the original cause of all the causes. He is the original uh, reason from where everything came. And he is the one who maintains the whole material and um, creation as well. It is uh, confirmed in the Katupanishad, second canto, second chapter, 13th verse Nityo Nityanam Chetanas Chetananam Eko Bahunam Yo Vidhati Kaman. He is, he is the original eternal among all the eternals. Like Prabhupada says, it means that we are the part and parcel, we are also eternal. Qualitatively, we are different but quantitative uh, sorry qualitatively we are similar but quantitatively we are different so we are also part of that eternal supreme being and uh, we have to understand this then only we will be able to serve krishna nicely that he is the original supreme personality of godhead the beautiful term which Prabhupada uses for us. Uh, we will see that nowhere in the world, in no other scriptures, this this uh, term, Supreme Personality of Godhead is used. Prabhupada has coined this beautiful term just for our sake, so we can understand that Krishna is the primal cause of all causes and he is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna. In verse 11, Krishna continues to tell Arjun that he is the strength of the strong and he is separated from any kind of passion and desire and he is the sex life, Krishna says, but it is not contrary to the religious principles, O Lord of the Bharatas, Bharatas Arjun. So Arjun is referred to here in this uh, verse as, a Bhara, as Bharata. So in, uh, in the purport, Prabhupada explains to us that uh, if a person has been endowed with some kind of strength, it should be not to exploit somebody, but it should be used to protect the people who are weaker than that person. And uh, whatever strengths we have been given by Krishna, we should be using them for the betterment of the people around us, because we should understand that each and every person around us has got and actually each and every species around us whether it is in the form of animal or the plant it has got the same the source of the uh, their soul is same as us and uh, that source as super soul is residing in each and every one around us so then we will not be misusing the 
the energies or the qualities or the or uh, or any kind of uh, special powers we have been or skills we have been given by krishna then we will be actually using to uplift the ones around us and not to exploit the ones around us in any way whether it is an animal or whether it's a plant tree or whether it is our uh, fellow human beings so it is one of our dharmas krishna says he is the he is the sex life meaning that it means that uh, we should have the children so that those children can carry on the krishna consciousness in future uh in the society so this is why krishna has given us this uh, this uh, this life uh, you know the sexual part of our lives it is not just for our mundane enjoyment and uh, for uh, just forgetting uh, the real purpose behind it. it is to procreate the progeny who are going to establish the dharma the principles of dharma and and spread the krishna consciousness as we know or in other words we have to make sure that uh, the future generations they understand what is who is the controller who is the creator and who is the one who is maintaining everything and eventually who is the one who is going to annihilate everything so we have to understand uh, that supreme and uh, this is our big responsibility as parents to keep our kids uh into the krishna consciousness and to help everybody around us uh however we have understood krishna consciousness we should try to explain it to others cuz that makes krishna very happy krishna what makes krishna happy krishna is very happy he says when he sees that his name is being uh, distributed to everyone around so what is what is the purpose of that when you distribute the name actually you also are repeating the name so you are doing yourself a favor first then you are doing the favor to the others and it's all the, by the mercy of krishna it's all by the mercy of the association it's all by the mercy of the prasadam we had somewhere some sometimes in the first instance so we should be always be uh, conscious of the presence of krishna in our lives he is present around us in the material and the spiritual energy and we should be always always conscious of it now the last verse verse 12 of this session krishna continues that he that all the states of being whether it is goodness passion of or ignorance that that is the three modes of nature they're all created by his energy and he, he says i am in one sense everything now this is very important line krishna says that i am everything but still i am independent because he is not under the mercy of modes of material nature like we are we are 24/7 under the influence under the under the mercy of um, mode of modes of material nature and all these modes of nature krishna says they are, they are residing within him so now we understand the three modes of nature we should be using these modes of nature to our uh to our what what we should what should we say to our advantage we should know yes mode of goodness is prevailing in first thing in the morning in the v hours of the morning so we should try to uh have a bath and try to do our rounds to our chanting then okay we we might have to go to work we might have to do some of our household duties and everything else but still if we rise up early if we sleep early in the night we can do that and serve krishna in the morning because at that in those hours the our mind is under the mode of goodness uh attention or uh, uh is it is mode of goodness until the influence of moon is there it is mode of goodness but when the sun arises the the passion 
that kicks in. So after 10 a.m. in the morning, throughout the whole day, it's more of passion. We can use those hours in finishing our jobs, in, in, in uh, using our energies, in uh, productivity, in our jobs. And again, in the evening, later on, the mode of ignorance kicks in and we should try to sleep on time so that we can wake up on time and serve Krishna again. So modes of material nature, they have been created for for our bodies actually. Because we need rest in the night. So Krishna has created the creation and then these modes of uh, nature, the goodness, passion and ignorance have been kicked in in a way that that is all conducive to our existence. It helps our daily activities and Krishna says that he is nirguna. He he is he has got all the gunas within him and he is issuing these modes. Prabhupada says in the purport, but these modes they do not affect him. So Bhagwan is the creator of all of all these uh, various uh, material energies around us but he is still unaffected by anything. So what what do we have to do? From verse 13 we will understand Krishna will explain to us that we have to surrender to Krishna. We have to leave our assumptions on one side and we have to leave our conceptions of our mind on one side. But what we have to do, we have to understand Krishna properly by surrendering to his authority. So it's it's beautiful. This um, Bhakti Yoga is so beautiful now. After understanding the, the, the Jnana Yoga, the Dhyana Yoga and the Karma Yoga, this Bhakti Yoga... Is, has been started so it is all like a science Krishna has given everything to us uh, actually on our plates we can say Every, everything has been served and even Prabhupada has explained to it nicely to us he has actually uh, I, I feel like saying that Prabhupada has uh, has uh, made uh, beautiful preparations for us in the form of in the form of purports and uh, we can relish them nicely we can understand them and uh, we have got so many classes given by so many uh, exalted devotees in our movement so each time we open any verse it is like a, a brand new verse to us depending upon our state of mind what we are going through in our personal life our or professional life and our health so thank you for joining i i see it uh, Padma Malini has joined us today. Uh, thank you for joining and we will continue in this journey tomorrow onwards. I wish you all a beautiful day ahead in in this Damodar month. Enjoy the Damodar month and tomorrow is the Ramai Kadashi. So we'll meet again. Hariyam Tatsat and Hare Krishna.